So I grew up in a very small town. In fact, it was so small that when I was in grade six, I did a speech for my school class, and it, there was 652 people in my town, and that's the town I grew up in. So my brother and I had to get very creative in how to entertain ourselves, and we certainly did. We had a big imagination. Here's a picture of my brother and I. Very cute, aren't we? We look so innocent and naive and not mischievous, and yet there's one day where we were very mischief. I'm about four, five, six there, Todd is about uh, four there, and we decided that we would decide, we would find out who was the strongest. And so we had a game called Who's the Strongest Contest. Sounds pretty reasonable. And since I was the oldest, I was the one that was coming up with all the ideas. So I decided, let's figure out who has the strongest legs. So we're going to run around the house, and whoever gets around the house the quickest is the winner. And because I'm the tallest and the oldest, I ran around the house first, and I won. I had the strongest legs. Then we decided, well, who has the strongest arms? And in my house, we had this really crazy trap door that was a part of the floor, and you had to open up the trap door in order to go into the basement. I mean, it was, it was a heavy door. It was like the floor. People could stand on it. And so you'd have to lift this up without falling down the stairs into the basement. And so the, the contest was, let's lift this 10 times, and whoever can do it the fastest has the strongest arms. And so I had the strongest arms. Then we decided, who has the strongest hair? Okay, so we had to come up with how are we going to test who has the strongest hair? And so I decided, well, naturally, you would just pull on your hair until you yelled. And whoever yelled the loudest clearly did not have the strongest hair. And so my brother and I were pulling each other's hair, and I don't know how many times we pulled, but it ended up that I had the strongest hair because I didn't yell the loudest. And then we decided, well, who has the strongest teeth? So you'd think that we would, you know, go out to the fridge and get an apple or a carrot and try to figure out somehow who has the strongest teeth. But instead, I grabbed a shoelace. And I said to my brother, Todd, I was like, Todd, this is what we're going to do. We're going to see who has the strongest teeth, and we're going to sit cross-legged on the floor across from one another, and we're going to put the string in each of our mouths, okay? Like this. And then on the count of three, we're going to pull. One, two, three, pull. I'm happy to report that that was the first and only competition my brother won that day because my tooth went flying out of my mouth and it was not meant to come out. It literally took, I think, a year and a half for it to grow and it was this one here. Um, we were in such shock as we sat there across from one another. The pain didn't even register. The only thing that registered was, what is mom going to say? <laughs> and I remember, I, my mom was upstairs curling her hair in the bathroom, and we, you know, immediately went into sort of the fear mode of like, what's going to happen? What's mom going to say? And then we went into the blame game, right? Well, you started it. Well, you're the one who pulled my teeth out. Well, this was your idea anyways. And so we took the long road up the stairs to where my mom was curling her hair. And I actually don't remember what my mom said or did, I just remember her concern for my tooth. It's like, are you okay? And why is this bleeding? And what's going on? And where is your tooth? I mean, there was no sort of, you know, anger. There was nothing. It was just this concern that my tooth was missing. And this story reminds me so much of the grand story that we find ourselves in. It's the grand story of Scripture. And in fact, it's the, a great backdrop for the prodigal son.